Hey folks, Chris here, the day-to-day -day apologist. I'm doing a uh, reaction kind of uh, video to a recent TikTok that was done by a pastor um, that claimed that Jesus was racist. Uh, he was getting it from Mark chapter 7, verses 24 through 30, where Jesus calls a woman a dog and concludes that Jesus was convicted by this woman's actions and therefore uh, sinned, though Jesus did, and became repentant and changed from his sinful, wicked ways. Now, before you, we get into the emotional responses, all that stuff, let's look at the context, and then we'll get into whether or not this pastor was correct, how should we respond, and whether there's other scripture that supports this or doesn't. So with that said, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell button to get notifications for all videos that get posted in the coming weeks. So, Mark chapter 7, verses 24 through 30 says, Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he couldn't keep his presence a secret. In fact, as soon as a woman heard about him, this woman, by the way, was a, had a little daughter possessed by an impure spirit. She fell at his feet. The woman was Greek, born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of, the, out of her daughter. Jesus responds, first let the children eat all that they want, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumb. Then he told her, for such a reply you may go, the demon has left your daughter. She went home and she found her daughter lying on the bed and the demon was gone. Now, Jesus does refer it appears that this woman was considered a dog. And we'll get into what Jesus was meaning in a second. But I think it's very important that we acknowledge that Mark is not the only gospel. There are accounts of this story in other books as well, like in Matthew chapter 15, 21 through 28. Jesus went away from there, withdrew from the region of Tyre and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from that region came out and began to cry, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he did not answer her with even a word. And his disciples came up and urged him, saying, Send her away, because she keeps shouting at us. But he answered and said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came, she came and began to bow down before Jesus, saying, Lord, help me. Yet he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. But please help anyway, for even the dogs feed on the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, O oh, woman, your faith is great. It shall be done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed at once. Now, there's a phrase that I hear from my apologetical and evangelistical friends, which is very true, and it's called context is king. We can say anything about something if we take it out of context. But when we look at the full picture, when we're reading all the information, we get the clear snapshot of what is truly going on. So Mark gives an account and Matthew gives an account. It's the same setup. Matthew has a little more information, a little more dialogue, and we have a clear understanding of what is going on. So is the pastor correct? No. <laughs> I don't think so at all. And I will repeat what verse 27 says after Jesus says, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She says, yes, Lord, but please help anyway. She acknowledges that what Jesus is saying is true, even though she's a Gentile, not Jewish. And he says, he starts referring to what's going on her as a dog. Now, because Jesus said, dog, does that make him racist and sexist? I don't think so. Dog meant to the Jewish people, generally, when people used it as nasty, dirty, unclean creatures, which back in their time, I don't think a lot of people owned dogs. A lot of dogs were pack, you know, pack animals. They were wild. They eat and kill. And they were just out of, kind of out of control. They were like vermin, like rats in their time. But when Jesus is talking about it, when he starts breaking it down to the Greek, which I'll post a link of a guy who does a response to this TikTok video, talking about the Greek 
words, demonstrative and so on, with the word dog, you'll have a better understanding. I'll make this simpler. Jesus is basically saying this dog is someone's owner and care. It's not a dog of the wild streets like the Jews would refer anybody who is un-Jewish. No. This dog is in the home at the master's table looking for scraps. But any parent, a good parent, will tell you, if I'm making food for my family, the family gets fed first, and if I give dogs the scraps, I do it out of love and compassion and care for them. Yes, was the woman being referred to as a dog? Yes, but Jesus wasn't meaning it to be vile, negative. In fact, some would argue that Jesus was searching to see what this woman's faith and response was going to be to this. And she responds in full faith, acknowledging Jesus as being the master of the table and having the power to heal her daughter. She is not a Jewish woman. Her religious beliefs would not support any idea of Jesus being the Messiah. Yet the woman watched probably Jesus, heard about Jesus, maybe even talked to a few people who got healed by Jesus. And she said, my goodness gracious, this must be God in flesh. I've got to go find this guy. She begged him over and over again because she knew that he had the power to do anything. This was not a statement of, well, you're so... You're, you know, you're mansplaining to me, Jesus, and you're a racist and a sexist, and I'm going to show you. And Jesus is like, oh, I'm so convicted. I can't believe this. I'm so sorry. I'll heal your daughter because you're so right in your wokeness. That's not what's going on here. Jesus acknowledges this woman publicly and praises this woman publicly. This did not happen in any culture in Jesus's time. Women getting acknowledged like say in a court of law, if a woman had to go and give testimony, a slave had a higher chance of being believed in a court of law than a freed woman did. And yet here Jesus is healing this woman's daughter and praising this woman publicly. The woman was not Jewish. And yet Jesus takes the time to do this. This is an example of a compassionate, in tune well past the culture's viewpoints on what's morally acceptable and not morally acceptable. God, this is very good news. So, we've got two options when it comes to this pastor, this woke pastor. He's either A, misled and became passionate with this culture and this cancel, cancel culture and progressive movement and all this stuff, which we should care about the rights of everybody. It should be equal. We should show no favoritism to one skin color or the other, one gender or the other. It should be equal. So he either got wrapped up in this, read the scripture, didn't look at Matthew, didn't look at any other scriptures, and just kind of was like, this is what I believe. And this is right, which that's not very good pastoring. If you went to Bible college, they definitely teach you not to just do that. I would know... I went to Bible college. So I think maybe that was the case. I don't know this guy. I'm not friends with him. I only saw a 15 second TikTok video, but he does need to be corrected. He needs to be shown other scripture. He needs to repent and he needs to turn away from this ungodly and to be honest, in my opinion, lazy form of pastoring. Or the other option is, is this pastor is a wolf in sheep's clothing, the person that Jesus warns about, pretending to be something and not. This means he's intentionally blaspheming Jesus. Buddy, if you ever watch this video, you need to look out because blaspheming against the Lord is a big no-no. And maybe I'm wrong here, but scripture shows me that God has little patience for blaspheming, intentionally misleading people away from him. Which means if he is blaspheming and he is doing these things, he needs to be exposed as a fake pastor and that he's not a Christian. That also means from a leadership perspective, pressure needs to be placed on whoever is overseeing this denomination of the church and he needs to be stripped of his pastoral credentials and made sure he never pastors again until he repents and changes from his wicked, intentionally blasphemous ways. Either way, we need to pray for this guy. Specifically, 
that he and others like him will repent and give their life over to the biblical, full context, Jesus. Now, for those that say, well, if there's scriptures that say that, you know, Jesus isn't racist, yes. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, God made him, him being Jesus, who had no sin to be sinned for us, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Hebrews 14.15 also supports it. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. 1 John chapter 3, verse 5. And that's just a few verses. There are a lot more. So, I don't know this guy's true intent. It will come out over time. But next time you hear people saying stuff like this, look at the full context of the claims. Ask yourself the question, what do they mean by that? Where did they come to that conclusion? Is there any other evidence that supports the claim? Because just because somebody says it's true, doesn't make it true. I hope that people, when they watch my videos, will look up scripture and look at things. And I'm appreciative when people challenge and ask questions. Because let's face facts, I'm a human being, I can make mistakes. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little longer than usual, but it's a lot of information to unpack. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and share it with somebody. Because this guy is getting a lot of attention right now on social media. And it probably does need to be addressed. God bless you guys. Thanks for all your support. And have a great day.